Uh, we're here in the concourse of the Buffalo Central Terminal. Um, originally built in uh, 1929, uh, it was opened in June 22nd of 1929. The heyday of this, uh, this great Buffalo landmark was uh, in the 40s during World War II when uh, essentially 98% of everything uh, moved by rail. Uh, there was up to 230 trains a day going through this building, a, a, a lot of people traffic. It was, it was quite amazing the amount of uh, activity there was here in the building. Uh, at one time during those years, uh, Buffalo was number two in North America for the second largest railroad hub. Chicago was number one. Uh, Buffalo was a very strong number two with uh, New York City being a distant third. In the 40s, uh, this con concourse was very similar to what you'd see uh, at Christmas time at O'Hare Airport, where you'd see throngs of people uh, buying their tickets, uh, you know, turning in their baggage, uh, having something to eat. The various kiosks along the main concourse had, one was a watch counter, one was a soda fountain, one was for reservations, and one was to buy newspapers. It was pretty much a city in and of itself. Uh, my parents were married in the neighborhood in, uh, in October of 1939, and this was their Galleria Mall, because you could literally get your hair cut here. You had tailor shops, you had taxis, you had flower shops, uh, you had a restaurant, you had a snack bar. So people would come here as a social uh, environment way back when. And uh, with a train coming and going every six minutes, there was a lot of activity here. After World War II, um, well, uh, planes uh, became uh, techn technologically uh, efficient. Uh, cars uh, were uh, made uh, much better, more reliable. And during the 50s, the New York State Thruway System uh, was planned and put in. Uh, railroad traffic uh, went from 230 trains a day in the 40s to about 100 trains a day in the, in the early 50s. 60s brought, brought about 50 trains a day. And uh, the, the final days of operation was October of 1979 when the last Amtrak train left Central Terminal. After 1979, uh, the building was put up for auction between the city of Buffalo and, and Conrail. Uh, the, the initial owner, Tony Fidelli, uh, did a, a very good job in trying to keep the building uh, stable uh, and, and going. He had train shows, he had lease space, uh, and, and a going concern concept where he had a developmental plans, but uh, there was problems with taxes. It was not all Tony's fault. The city of Buffalo played a major part in the way the taxes were assessed and assigned to this building. In the early 80s, Tony fell on bad times. The city of Buffalo reacquired the building. At that point in time, uh, they essentially kicked Tony Fidelli out of the building. Now, this building was absolutely pristine in 1986. Tony left right around that time. Uh, the stewardship transferred over to the city of Buffalo, and at that point in time, uh, the building was sold for salvage. And that's unfortunately where you see a lot of the damage done to the building. A lot of the plumbing, the artifacts, the lighting. Over my shoulder, you see the concourse clock, which we we're fortunate, fortunate enough to get back. Uh, but a, a lot of the historical pieces of the terminal was uh, essentially sold uh, overseas and everywhere else. There, there's a lot of artifacts in, in a deli in Hong Kong that has some of the lighting and things like that. Uh, in 1997, the Central Terminal Restoration Corporation uh, purchased the building for a dollar. And uh, if you were to go to our website, uh, buffalocentralterminal.org, you'll see what we purchased for a dollar. It, it, it was in very rough shape. The concourse had mounds of dirt on it. It, it, was, it was very, very discouraging. However, however since uh, 1997, in the past 14 years or so, the Central Terminal Restoration Corporation and all its volunteers kept the building away from the wrecking ball. And through the stewardship of the Central Terminal Restoration Corporation, we we're able to open the concourse up for events. And now we're looking forward to some of the conceptual ideas of what can be done with the space. The Central Terminal is 523,000 square feet. Uh, although it was initially designed for a train station or transportation center, there were things going on even when the Central Terminal in the 40s was a full-blown train station. The office tower was indeed just that. There was a lot of office activity and business activity. We see something similar going on in its future. The concourse was open public space. The Central Terminal Restoration Corporation would like to see it stay that way and stay the same. Hence, 
We would like to see events go on in the future, even after the building is developed. We have a five-story wing, which was uh, essentially called a baggage building, but that could be light industrial or once again condo or office space. So uh, if you take a look at our conceptual plan, it, it outlines some of the possibilities of this great landmark. And it's, uh, it's really a challenge, but yet it's, it's really rewarding to see some of the darkened spaces of the central terminal uh, come back to life with activity. What, one of the most difficult challenges uh, of the Central Terminal Restoration Corporation is funding. Uh, I mean, if you look at the cost per square foot at, at 523,000 square feet, it's pretty substantial. So uh, initially, the first few years, I'm going to say the first eight, maybe ten years, was to get the building away from the wrecking ball, because uh, that, that was definitely consideration. But now we're to the point of we cre we've created a master plan, and it, funding is, is, is needed, uh, is direly needed. And uh, we're, we're looking just to get the building back into a usable building, 55 to $60 million, with upwards of close to $100 million for a final end product, with fully, fully utilized uh, complex. We encourage, uh, we're, we're still a volunteer-driven uh, organization. We encourage uh, volunteerism. Uh, go to our website. If, you, if there's uh, projects of interest, uh, we, we'd love to have you help out. But we're also reaching out to foundations and uh, corporate sponsors. Uh, individual corporations like the Buffalo Bisons, uh, George and Mackworth, Mullenberg Best, who uh, donated the Buffalo back to us. And, and some other uh, strong individual corporations are helping us, but we need much, much more to keep this project moving forward. For anybody interested in volunteering, uh, a really hands-on project uh, would be our annual spring cleanup. We've been doing that since 1998. That'll be held at the terminal uh, starting at 10 a.m. Uh, May 12th. So anybody who uh, would be interested in uh, getting involved and, and getting onto the volunteer list, there's other events besides that, but. Uh, we can use definitely uh, an extra set of hands for the spring cleanup.